Hey, g'day, how you all going? I'm Ian Apples, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video. Before I get started, I'll put a size on the canvas there, what size I'm using, and I'll also get some colours going up the screen there for you as well. That way you can write them down and use the same colours I'm using, but if you don't have the same, you can always use something similar, all right? Now I'm gonna do a, um, what do they call them? A covered bridge, like a bridge over a bit of a uh, lake or a stream. Got some rocks there, just some subtle reflections, the sky, uh, some shrubs and bush and trees growing around it, making it a secluded, covered bridge, all right? And you know what? I'm thinking with this painting, once you've done it and you've grasped what you needed to do and you've accomplished it and you've got it hanging on your wall, it's gonna make people look at it and go, you know what? I like that. That's what sort of impact it's gonna have. So come on over here and I'll get right into it with you. Now what I'm wanting is I wanna determine the height of my horizon line. And if anything, you don't want it too far up here, all right? You want it down low. But this one, it's not a distant object we're looking at, it's reasonably close. So I'm gonna have me horizon about middle way. That's my point where I wanna have everything. So I wanna have the covered bridge within that area and anything coming forward and the water here, and then shrubs can go behind whatnot with the sky, okay? So that's where I wanna start things with. I wanna probably have, uh, from that horizon line, I wanna probably have, yeah, well, what have I got here? Something like the bridge. I'm just gonna do it all freehand. I have seen a movie with Clint Eastwood years ago in the Madison County there, and you know, I'm not doing that bridge though. I just wanna do something. I'm just gonna rough it in. But when I actually paint it in, I'll do a better job and there'll be, I don't know, I want this to be some kind of the road going into it. You know, some land here, some maybe some rocks on the side of the land, some reflections of them in there like that. Okay, first things first, I'm gonna do my sky and I'll get a bit of retarder into the craft paint there and um, we'll get that mixed up. Now it's not gonna be a detailed sky, so I don't need a lot of retarder into this paint, just enough to keep it wet enough so I can get my blending going, because I do want a few little clouds in there. And I want to pretty much get the sky area colored. So I'm gonna go, my trees are gonna be about that high, but I would like to come down a little bit within there so I can have some air in between my trees there. And this can probably come to about there. Just like that. And now I'll just stroke that left and right and get it nice and smooth, just to get that blobs and lumps out of there. Now I've got some cerulean blue. I love using cerulean blue for my sky. There's no retarder in this paint now. It's just in what I put on the craft paint. And I've got a bit of mid-tone gray there as well. So I'll get this at the top of the sky, put it in. Now I'm gonna crisscross it down where I want it to go. If anything, it's gonna get lighter at the bottom. Get that in there, pick up some more of that blue to get it up this height, there we go. I've crisscrossed it everywhere. It's pretty much everywhere I need it. Now I'm gonna stroke that. Look how easy that was. You can do that. You can do that, it's very easy. Practice just that procedure. Pull that over that way. You can if you want. I've just grabbed a little bit of craft paint on my brush, all right? And we'll put this here just to lighten the bottom area that's creating the sphere shape in the sky the atmosphere creates that look of it coming around like it does on the sky there and within that we're going to put some of that mid-tone gray i've just simply wiped the brush i haven't washed it and we'll get some gray 
in the bottom there. We don't want it too dark though if we can help it. Let's see how we go. Probably around here. Down there. Now it will dry darker. I've put it on but there's still grey within my brush. So what you need to do is be a bit of a gentleman. Wipe that. I'm wiping it. I'm wiping it. Okay, it's all wiped. And then we want to just use the tip of this putter on a brush and just brush that into the sky. And we've got a bit of that going on in the sky. It's giving it a bit more of a realistic look, but it was so easy to achieve. Now before this dries, I better get some clouds in there. Now I'm using titanium white out of the tube. It's so different to that craft paint. I'm using my favorite putter on a brush for clouds, which is a fan brush. This is a hog bristle fan brush. And I just like to get some shapes in the sky. So I'll probably start from about the gray and bring them up into the blue because I know I'm going to have trees here and here. So I'll probably just schedulate something up into the sky there within the middle, giving it a bit of body and I don't know, stuff like that. Grab yourself a blending brush and a cloth to constantly wipe it. Now I will get this bit here just tickled there. It's going to create a bit of a, a levelness and a bump to the cloud there like that. Boom. Now look what's on my blending brush. Message me on Facebook if you want me to get you some of these brushes and the putter on a brush. Links in the description below. Now I'm going to just turmoil, twist, blend. I'm, I'm an off. Look what's on my brush. Stop and wipe it and create just a simple loving cloud. Now I don't like the way that's a bit too much like that. I want it kind of blending into the sky. That's just the way I want it. It's up to you how you want your clouds to look. And of course we can just get the most simplest gap fillers like these sort of things. So these get pretty much whispered right into the sky. And what I might do with this one is just put a bit of yumminess in it. I haven't put any grey. We'll just put some yumminess there. All right, I'll throw that brush in the water ready to be washed. And with the yumminess, you just want to sit it down, but leave in the vibrancy there. A lot of avid followers of mine will know this, but if you're new to my channel, share, like, and subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you'll learn how to do fantastic clouds with so much bullshit quality within them. Okay, and that's just giving it more dimension. These ones here, we just whisper away into nothing. They're those whispery ones like that. Just filling in the sky, filling in those gaps. That's why I call them gap fillers. <laughs> now what I've done here, I've just scribbled in a bit more dimensions to me covered bridge and roughly the layout where I want the road. Uh, the concrete footing that it'll be sitting on on the edge of the bank. The, I want it. I want to capture it coming under the bridge as well, and all this will be shrubs and bushes and background stuff. So we'll get that on there now. I'll try and leave this bit out. And for those people who want a traceable for this bridge, I'll make a traceable up, and I'll pretty much have it on a horizon line. So whenever you use that traceable, you get it to the horizon line where you want on your painting. And that's where you will trace it on. It'll just be the bridge area there and it's up to you to make out by my painting what you can do there. I'll, I'll put all these bits here for it anyway and you just incorporate that into your painting. Now I've got some forest green I want to pull out a bit. I'm using a filbert brush and I'm going to blackulate some of that. That just means my way of adding black into it because I don't want it just black and I don't want it just green. Green's too light and black's too hard and heavy so I want to get pretty much a black green and I just want to map in the depth of all the trees that I'm going to have before in the far ground so now I'm just pushing it into my filbert brush now I've got the bridge here pretty much from this point all the way down there 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 it's going to have shrubs behind it and we'll have some foreground ones in front of that as well but on there's the side of the road there so what I will do is um, 
I don't want to go too much in front of there. So I'll put some of this, I'll just start dancing it, make an umbrella shapes in front of me roof of the um, bridge. Get mind blanks when I'm trying to explain something. I don't know why, but now I'm going to leave some air in between it as well. Bits of air always gives it that good realistic look. And then within this, you can highlight it. Now what I'm doing in my mind, that's where the bridge is going to go. So it's pointless putting it there. In my mind, I'm here in Australia. I haven't gone to Carolina. I'm here. And I want to just roughly first just come along here and get the top there done. Bang. Now I will detail it within the darkness that I want. Twisting my brush, see how I'm going like that? I've not just got it here and going like that, getting a nice even stamp everywhere like that. I want it sort of like that within there, you see? Just these little things you can pick up. Now within there, we're gonna get some air in there, bits down here, and then from about here onwards, it can start being more solid. But we'll get back onto this side here as well. The same over here, so we've got lots of air in between it coming down there lots of air in between it making up this tone of mass and it'll probably get darker here now my roads there my, you watch when I put some water with that paint see that not too much but it helps it now my roads there and probably that's all the the air see the bits of blue air in between the tree foliage it's important to get that in there so it's not just one solid mass and we'll just get this to the side maybe some poking through there me horizon line so i'll just bring that across there like that to the bridge like that and then start mapping all this in that can all be pushed in there this is nice and dark. I'm going to be able to add highlights and all sorts within here and little bits of lawn and road and whatnot. But you'll see now this solid bit here, in my mind, I'm gradually, there you go, look at that, getting bits of thicker ones in there as well. Bits of air in there. And it just looks more pleasing when the painting's finished that it looks a bit more real instead of big solid stamp block tree right in your painting there. Oh, now I'm just looking at it here and underneath there and here, all this is my water. So what I might as well do, I've got a bit of limestone and rocks there, so I'll leave that out. I'm gonna get all this green as well. So I'll just quickly block this in with the blackulated green all along here and then I can highlight everything. Now it's up to you how much road you want in yours, how much highlight you want in yours, how much detail. There's that bit of limestone holding it on. And I'll see this. I'm trying to keep this line here of the trees, if anything, more level than on an angle down like that. If it's too much of an angle down like that, it starts looking a bit, what's wrong? What happened? Something's not quite right. It's happened to me in my early days and it's so frustrating. So we'll just get all that done. And then what I want to do now is dry all this. Before I do dry that, I want to put a bit more tree here. So we're getting that same color. And I want to put the darkness in for the, because these are at the background and I want some kind of, you know, let's put one here. Some kind of tree there. Just something filling up the sky. Pick up a bit more paint, something. Coming down, a bit more there, can come over there. I don't know what sort of tree it is, it's just something out of my mind. It's not a realistic photo, but it'll have a quite a bit of realism in it. We'll bring some down the trunk of it, stuff that comes in front of the trunk of it, and probably something right off here. Start right off the painting. There's the edge of me painting right there. I'm just gonna come right off it, and like that there, like that. Boom, bidi, boom, boom. Now just a little tip for what I do, 
the brush I used to paint all that, which is this one here, I've cleaned it because that's going to be the same brush I used to detail it. I did just add the background foliage in there as well, I almost forgot. Now what I'm going to do, I'll dry that and we'll start getting all the water done. Now I'll use the rest of this craft paint and I'm going to use a cobalt blue for the sky reflection in the water. So pretty simple. I want to map in all this white. I've dried, I did I say it, I've dried everywhere. Now we're going to come under there, up to there. This is going to be the water. Boom. Now, I do know some people have mentioned it in my group. I even thought of it when I was beginning. How do you get the reflections in the water? Well, what I'm going to do to make it so easy to understand, but very achievable, is I'm just going to simply, because you can paint green here, a bit of rock reflection and shadows and get all confused and whatnot like that. I'm just going to paint the sky reflections in the water and then we'll put the greens and the rock colors all over it and it'll just make sense. Now you need to wipe that brush and we'll pick up the cobalt blue. I haven't used this color much, so I'm just giving it a go. And I want to start at the bottom and just bring it up to the middle like that. Where are we? See, I know that's going to be mainly green and here. So I'm mainly doing the bottom, letting it fade away and right up. We'll stamp it on like that so we get it in there. There we go. That's why sometimes you see me stamp it. It's Instead of trying to paint it on like this, you can control where you want it. Like let's say I want a bit more there. And then you just stroke it like a gentleman. There we go. Now you could have had whatever value blue you wanted. I don't know. I'm, I'm just trying the cobalt because I had it there. I've never used it and I want to try it. So there's our sky color in the water. Now everything in the water side is wet. I've dried all that. I'm picking up some more of the forest green with some black in it again. The same value I had here. And you want it to start off with it dark. And I want to just come, let's say here, where are we? Don't put too much on your brush. Uh, we'll come under the bridge here. This bit of water here, this bit of reflection here. So I'll just get the, the bottom of that back in there where it's going to be somewhere there like that i've just cleaned my putter on a brush so i'm just going to simply grab it where the i know the water line's going to be and i just want to pull it down boom boom see i've got that blue line there what i should have done is turned it around but that's okay we're still going to have detail there that's that distant We'll put a bit more there, I feel, I don't... And if you, you think that's too scary, just use this brush to pull it down like that as well. Just nice, all the way there like that. That's looking cool. That's it, leave it. Now we're gonna do the same for over here. So we're pretty much getting this over the water area there and we want to pull this down boom 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 look at there and sort of go by that bit down lower there boom like that that'll do see all these bits of blue there don't worry about that just yet we'll sort that out over here now we've got pretty much here and there so i'm putting this on boom 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 boom, boom twisting it stamping it on there that white in the water that color that's allowing all this to happen and just boom get more on there twist it on big i want a bigger chunks here get some more of that dark in there and we'll start going a bit lower down here and some air in the trees there just like that This is how we're getting, now there is some up here, so we can probably come from about here. 
and up to there, something like that. Because in front of this, when I put the bridge on there, we are going to have the reflections of that in there. And we're going to have reflections of um, highlights in the trees and everything as well that's going to make it quite yummy. I'll just get the darker colour again and roughly where my horizon, my waterline is, I'll just quickly put that back like that just to hide all those brush marks, something like that. All right, next colour, I'm grabbing the forest green with that same brush. The brush is dirty, here we go. And I've got cadmium yellow light. I'm mixing that with my forest green and creating my yellow green flavour that I want. So I'm doing a brush mix here, get some water in it. So we'll start here. This one here, I'll get that going. Oh, let's get some water on there so I can see what we're doing. Okay, I'm looking at it, not enough yellow. So not, no worries, just pull more into that mix. There we go. This is subtle, this one that I'm putting on, but we're gonna highlight this again. And I'm trying to put this on the top of any dark areas there. So underneath is dark. Now this one is going to, I haven't dried that properly yet. That's probably why it's not working either. I wanna get this right in front of there. Right in front of there, making, there we go. Other values here, coming in there. These are the shrubs that are down beside the, coming from behind there. Where's my road? My road's about here. So I want darkness left at the bottom of that. And now I want to bring this right in front there of those bushes. Coming down there, coming up. If you feel you want to scratch some tree trunks in there as well, by all means do that. Now what we need to do is to get that kind of flavour in some here. Well, we've pretty much got it. It's not too bad at the moment. We'll do that later. I'll finish all this over here because this has already got light values in it, which is looking good. Now, we'll get some of this lightened up. Just here and there. Where I know the roof's going to be, I would like it to be darker. But you can see how these darks make these greens pop. And over here we just want some of this all highlighted now and detailed. And work out where you want different trees, different values of your darks and lights. Now I want to I want to try and just stop that one about there. I'll bring it down here somewhere. Because the out out of the road coming out of this, I pretty much want it to be, you won't see it, but you'll know it's there. It'll be just going within all these bushes and whatnot. Uh, so we'll bring some of this down there. We're coming down here. Uh, what I would like to do is probably have some lawn on the outside of my bridge, something like that. This is coming down. These are just trees coming from the um, side of the lake now. Uh, now this bit here, watch what I do there. Just grab some of the darker color again and simply put it over that, all right? So I'll grab that darker green, blacky green and just so we'll just darken that back up, feather it through, and then we can panel beat that. Now I've dried that. I just want that bit of lawn that I put there a little bit more lawnified. Come on, just like that. I'm doing it like this. It might look to the person that doesn't understand, but that will be sunken back. That's just a bit of lawn up there. Now we're going to grab that colour the more yellow color. And we're gonna simply highlight bits. Now please don't put white in it because it will give it a bit of a 
different look. Now, this lawn, that dark, I need to keep there. I want these trees looking like they're cressing over that lawn. That's kind of the road coming out of there. Okay, so I'll just put this back there. Now with acrylics, see when I'm gonna put the next highlight on here, you can always try to remember, you can dry every layer. So now back with this highlighted color that I had there, I'm just gonna bring that forward now. Uh, how do I wanna do this? I'll sort of, there like that. And I wanna, I've dried here, so I wanna get some values of this in the reflections just wherever, just pull them down in straight lines. So I've dried all this. It works better when it's dry. You're not gonna go pull white paint everywhere like I was doing before. Some highlights in that bit of grass over there. And then just pull them down as well like that. Now what I've simply done, this highlighted color, I've added more yellow to it, and I want to start finding my forward and backward trees from each other, okay? So I know that this one's here, and it's gonna have pockets of dark within that tree as well, just so it looks more, I don't know, tree looking, I suppose. That's the word I'm looking for. Oh, I don't like that bit there. Bits over the dark I want it dark there but I want to dribble some of the highlighted stuff over that dark to create 3d there we go just like that there and then we can get these colors and get into here as well some of that. Now see how we painted the water and then we're just adding these as we go and at the end of the painting once the bridge reflections are in there it's just going to look so busy and detailed and people look and think how did you do that? I like it. Different shrubs in the background here as well, trees, highlights, whatever. This is going to come down. There's the edge of my structure, so I wanna leave a bit of dark there, a bit of dark where the road is. That's it. Now, these will be on their own. This one's gonna be backwards in the background. So I'm not gonna go all here. And then that one will come right in front of it and push it back. Now, I didn't dry this, so I might have to stop and dry it. I'll see how I go. But see, I've left dark there. I've got some dark greens there that's spaying in front of that. There's just periodic cool bits highlighted here and there. Very dark there. I can put a trunk in there where the dark bits are. And then, of course, we'll highlight these bits in the water as well just here and there. Try and match it up, but if it doesn't matter if it's not perfect, it's just gonna look aesthetically great to the eye when people are looking at your paint and go, I like that. There we go. Now there's two ways you can go from here. You can just highlight that and leave it, but I'm gonna put that dead wood color within there. So I've got me cadmium yellow light, and I'm gonna get some burn umber and slowly mix into here until I get the value that I want. And then I'm going to put this within those trees here and there. And then I'll do my yellowy or greener highlight over what's there then. You can do the highlights over what's up there already or put this on and highlight it. And then once you put this on, you'll see the bullshit occur. So work out where you want it. I don't know. Well, where I'm going to highlight, I pretty much put this where I want some of it because this just adds the real to your colors and your greens, I feel. There's a lot of greens people do as beginners 
um, they don't know about this or they don't think to put it in and it can still look okay here and there but once it's in is in there you realize oh my goodness I like that put some of it here all over the place there bits of dirt bits of get some of it in there as well wherever periodically and you'll see just, just instead of just adding green and yellow the, these these colors just bring it home to daddy papa and we'll put some within here as well just to reference those values in there all right so once again we've got that color and we're going to mix more yellow into there getting a yellow green a bit more forest green there and this you don't want too much you probably you want this to cover about maybe 35 percent of the highlight you got up there and dribble into some of the darker areas now find those dead stick colors get some on there dribble over that black a bit if you want find some of that you're sinking pretty much that dead color you're sinking it down and with the darker areas this one's allowed to come in a little bit and go get hey how you going so you watch what i do here i want to sit that one back so i want to bring all the edge of this nice and bright right in front of those darker colors there and try and sit it back some of that brown there i'm feeling it's not quite highlighted enough but it'll do And we can obviously get some of this color and pull in there as well which is really brighter as well which is looking good some of the top we can do way up there yes come into the black and say get out here you're going which is about watch this there we go into that black there and you can pretty much see just how it's created your bush trees foliage see the big pockets of black there leave them don't feel obligated to fill it all in i'm using some of the um, black wood color that i mixed up the brown burnt wood color with a bit of brown in it just to create some kind of where's my line there's my water line there so what i want to do is kind of twist up now i should have done this before I did the highlight but it's too late now I'll put one there I want one about here twist it come up into that black area if you want and we we'll probably put some out here as well make sure it's inky enough so that it doesn't break on you when you're trying to pull them up you get nice solid lines and you get some in the background and the foreground like that twist it now these do look like they're sitting on top of all the trees there uh, but I'm going to sink them back down and you'll get an idea of just how they're going to look now I'm getting a darker black with mix within that just so as I can come to the other side because I want these ones to be darker brown gray brown over here I do want a, a few kind of coming out of there and up here somewhere Uh, where are we? we might be able to get something coming through here as well see it's not inky enough it's breaking up there we go these lighter color ones that we had i do want to get some resemblance of them in the water so i just want to kind of do that from where the bank's going to be uh, maybe I don't know what we can see there we might see that but we're gonna have rocks there so that's okay and that's why you watch the video before I do it because you'll know to put them in before so what I'm doing I'm grabbing the darker value 
and sinking them back where I want them sunk back like that I'm not using the light green otherwise it's going to look all wrong again so I'm doing this just sinking them back there there then grabbing that highlight and going back sinking them down like that wherever we put that bits of darker color all right where are we a bit there bit here that way they don't look like they're gone back over the painting and we could probably do that down here as well somewhere not too much don't get too carried away in. now we're not finished yet we're still going to put a surface on this water but now what i want to do is just put the limestone edging in and then i want to paint the bridge on top of that then it's finished so i've got some raw sienna dark i'm gonna there's i want about this much paint that's how much paint i want so i want to make up a limestone color maybe i could have used yellow ochre but i'll try this one and we can probably have some oh i need it lighter than that what do you call it darker values within this so i want to come pretty much here oh is that wet or draw where's my bridge um it's gonna come on oh, so i can come along here and I can sit the bridge over it, so that's okay. I'll do one coat, and then I'll grab me faithful hair dryer. See that big blob? Go from the blob side and just push it back in if it's buggering you around. Um, I'll, I'll do one coat. I'll make a traceable for this, so don't panic. If you think you can't do this, you can do it. Anything I show you on my channel, you can do. Now we're just going to block that in. So I'll get something down here. There will be grass in front of it, so I'll go just about there maybe. I don't want grass there. Oh, I've tried that. I'm just going to get... I want a darker value, so pretty much the burnt umber on my brush with some of that. And I'll pull that over here. I'll get some of the black in there just so as I can get a shadow under the bridge. Finding your shadows in something is very important. So the bridge is going to come here. So from about there, the corner, where's my bridge? It's going to come from about there, okay? My corner edge of the bridge. So I want this shadow on a bit of an angle coming in here underneath the bridge. This is all one color, one dark color. I'll probably detail darken this up off camera but you get an idea where I'm going now that's got it that's hitting the water that's where the water line is okay that can come up beyond the bridge because we're going to sink the bridge in front of that okay I'll get that a little bit more inky Not too much and I want to pull this shadow down now so I'll pull that into the water very straight boom into a straight line just like that Okay, so I'll come from that, I'll just prance along here, I'll come from that shadow nice and sharp, bang, get it straight, you dag. <laughs> now you want it smaller here, and then coming down deeper when following up, there we go. Now just grabbing a, sm a small round brush and the burnt umber, I want to put some rock in the water as well, so I'll probably put some there's my waterline, boom, right to that point. So I want to put some, probably just, this is just the shadow of them. I'll detail them later. Did I dry that? No, I didn't. Probably would help to dry that as well. Just in front of this limestone here, just to sink some of that back. These are just rocks. Just getting the burn umber with some of the white in there, just to highlight some of those rocks now. So I want the rocks where are we stones and rocks there and we're just highlighting some of these rocks pull the reflections down find out where they are and just pull the reflections down pretty much dance some black 
right along in there, right in between those rocks and their reflection. And uh, when I put the water on, well, don't jiggle too much. I didn't take that much chewing gum from the shop. <laughs> now, to make that covered bridge simple and easy to do with detail, we're simply going to map it in with black. And I'll use my bullshit stick so I can get a bullshit line coming down there. So I want to go from that gable peak all the way up the ridge cap here like that. Bang. Nice straight line. So <laughs> Now I've dried this, but I want to create some kind of old grass road surface coming through there, continuing here so I can start setting things back. So what I'll do is I'll map in first where I want it. So I want it about there. And we can cut back with the black again if we go too much. So there, pretty much there. And I'll move the stick so you can see what I'm doing. And that's pretty much this side here of the opening is where that's going to stop. I'm just going to create some kind of, I don't know, I'm just doing a grass road. It's like it's disused and it's, it's just a grass road there now and people go there and take photos, I suppose. I tell you what, I've never seen a bridge like this in Australia. There probably could be one somewhere. I don't know. I wouldn't know. I don't know everything. Um, but they are in the States a lot. And I have been asked by some people on the group, can we do a covered bridge, you think? And I thought, that's something I can look into, absolutely. I'll just scratch it in like that. That'll be the best way. So I'm coming about there like that. Scrumble it into there. I'm just making kind of a hill coming off here, so to speak. All right, I was going off, uh, this is where my water line is. So I want all that to be lawn there. I'm just picking up some of the green and I want to create this to be my bank there. So I pick up some green, map it all in, just like this. This is. I've got all those reflections down here, so that's what was confusing me. I've, I, I had a feeling something's not quite right here. Now I want to use the highlighted paint to give it its colour, and then we can put the shadows of these trees down onto that lawn. So uh, where are we going? Yeah, so all this is, I'm just going to scratch it in. From there, it's just lawn. Would have been better if I dried it. But I'm kind of making lawn. A lot of this is going to have some rocks here, so you don't see them yet. That's why it looks like that at the moment. But we've just got our lawn there. Quite light in value, just so as it will pick up the shadows of the trees above. Now I've grabbed the forest green again with my little small round. I've put a bit of black with it, not too much. From here we'll kind of get maybe from about here. Oh, not too thick, Ian. I want to come from this point. So just ban in some, just something like this. See, so shadows are a big part of a painting. You get them in there the right spot, you start creating good stuff. And this is what you can use to make the big bits and all, let me get lots of all of this over here done and just little bands raiding out, creating the openings in the trees and whatnot. How we go on there, some here. There's our shadows. 
Now, grabbing the brush I used to block that in, I'm gonna grab the gray and we're gonna detail this quite quick and easy. And then I'll put those rocks there. That can dry while I'm doing that. And then we'll put a nice film on top of that water. So I've got gray. I've got that color there that I use for the limestone rock. And we've got some black there as well. So I wanna get the gray. Let's just try a little bit of black in there, not too much. There we go. So what I'm gonna do is pretty much that point there in a straight line to about here, because I'm imagining from that gable point to there is the roof. You see what those little lines just done? And then you're also, you're gonna have a little bit of a overhang there on that gable, okay? Now what we'll do is we'll pretty much I'll just try and get a straight line there if I can. And then those brush strokes are gonna come up the roof, just like this. Boom, see the line you got there? Start from the line, be a champion and make it into art. There we go, because we're gonna have bits of dark in here as well. We'll come from there, right up that edge of the gable there. The edge of a pitched roof is a gable. Trust me, I know it's called that because I've been roofing for over 45 years. We'll bring this down in a downward thing to the doorway there. Let's go down to there, boom. Oh no, that's gotta be black in there, your dag, doesn't matter. Um, that's the roof, so that can be a little bit of darkness just under the gable there. And this is the edge there. Boom, bitty, boom, boom. So all that's part of it. Leave that black inside there because that's given the depth inside the building. Now see this eave? It's important to go from about this point Where are we? You come up from the bottom nice and hard and you want to stop there, but not in a neat factory line, just sort of so it looks shadowy. I'll turn my brush around. We're pretty much coming down the wall. And having that shadow there is important. It's creating the illusion that there's dimension within this flat picture. Okay, and then that other limestone color I got, we'll simply use that to highlight bits and pieces. When I was a little boy doing roofing, I loved doing top ridges. The ones that come down on an angle were hips, and they were just harder to cut in. <laughs> So you can see why I painted it all black. It's just created depth within all that timber look. Uh, we want this pretty much to the, I'll fix all this up later. Now I've got a little bit of dark in that and let's just say along here, I don't know about here, we'll just make believe these are all the old row of nails <laughs> gone a bit rusty in the side panelling there. You don't have to do this, but... And we could probably put some down the bottom as well. Just look like a row of rusty nails. Does that look? Yes, it does. Now that limestone colour we had, we'll grab a little bit of grey and we'll just lighten some of that up. Now I want to get this gable here a bit lit up with some just come down there like that. Boom. Uh, where's that colour gone? I want some of this with light hitting it, different values there. And yeah, we could probably put, I don't know, the minutest bits of light hitting some of this. Don't go into that shadow though if you can help it. Oh, and this front, that needs to be distinguished from the back side here. Okay. Um, probably get a bit coming down here. That'll do it, not too much. 
I might just there we go the minutest bit shimmering across the fascia line here there we go oh yeah simple and easy fun wasn't it eh I'm grabbing the raw sienna dark with some black very inky just to come across here now maybe from about the entrance which is about here we'll put a post boom one there uh, one here boom uh, where are we going to go I want to pretty much go I'll, I'll dot them in there somewhere along here just so I know how many to put in there and these are going to pretty much distinguish the hill to the ground going in to the structure now these are quite dark which they need to be because we're going to put the subtlest the subtlest highlight on these they can be as fat rickety whatever they can be now I want to grab the lighter color probably this color here just to highlight it so we'll find the tops of them and give them a bit of light on the top we can I just saw there so I better grab some of that darker green that I use for the shadow and we can probably I don't know these shadows will distinguish the shape of the land there how's that yeah that's all right okay just grabbing the uh, the darker green the shadowy color green I've got my little scrumbling brush and where my rocks are, which are here, I want to put some shrubbery. So I'm just getting this hairily like mapped in somewhere there, not too much, just about there. Just highlighting the tops of those, very literally. The bottom bit leave dark. How come? Uh, because we're going to put rocks there. We want the rocks to look like they're in front of this, not just all flat. Yeah, there we go. Oh, not too loud then. Now, when I'm finished, any bits here around the edge, I'm going to add little bits of posts and bits and pieces. We still got to add our reflection of the bridge in the water. Now, see, I'm going to imagine a line across here, right, like that. And that's where I'm going to do the reflection from. Boom. So that way it'll create the darkness underneath. So where is that shadowy color? Here it is here. We'll grab some of this. Now, don't forget, we've got that there we've got that there so the shadow's got to start from about here boom boom now if this is too light which i think it might be let me just get it there first how's that looking yeah i'm going to get the um the darker color oh, get it straight and what are you doing i'm all nervy you know what i'll do oh, i'll cheat i've got time because that's dry I'll get a bit of low tack tape. Just get across there where I want that to go, which is there. That'll do. Don't press it on like. And then we'll just get this. Where do I want? I want it to say about to there. It's about there-ish. So we'll. Oh yeah, now I can get it done. Look at that. I'm cheating. It's so good to cheat. But it's not cheating. It's just being cheeky cheeky and delivering which is about there which is about there there's the peak and then we're getting the the roof is sort of fading which is about there and we'll try some of that in there get some of that over there now I want some of the darker colour again, just to emulate this darker bit within there in the reflection, or oh, not too dark Ian. So we'll just lighten that up a bit. Boom, somewhere around there, somewhere emulating there. Just a bit of darkness. There we go. 
I'll pull that tape off. Does that work? Oh, I don't like that. So what I've got to do, I'm going a bit higher at this end and I'm going to make it a bit more distorted because that line's a bit too neat. So we'll just do that. There we go. Pull it down like that. And we'll get a bit of dark now, which is the dark green that we had before. Remember the dark green with the black in it, the blackulated green? Where are we? If I can find some. And we'll just lightly under here with this water. Oh, we want it more greeny black, not blacky green, but greeny black. Um, get some of this, all the lighter colours. We'll just sort of fix that up. Uh, where are we? We'll get some of that there as well because it's all under shadow there. Boom, 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 boom. I'm going to put some rocks here so that's okay. There we go. And where are we? Where do I have that paint? <laughs> Lost it. And I want to get some of this now just more careful. Just jostling down there as well, bits and pieces of it. That'll do. Now this bit here is dry, so I'm going to grab the, let's say I've got some black and burn umber mixed up. Just want a dark colour, because I want to just put the shadow in for me rock. So I want like a rock here. I'm just using this brush. I feel this might work for me, but they can be around. And they're all sort of going to be up here, coming around the edge of this waterline here. They've got some in between that shrub there. I want to leave a little bit of dark up there as well if we want and then we'll dry this i might put some out here somewhere something there scratch that wet paint down a bit there we go just distort it into the water move along so using this limestone color here they're going to be the rocks there now i have dried everything and just get the subtlest there we go some kind of i'll do that later because there's too much hardness on the brush now with this i want a a rock there a rock there a rock there something there we're just going to try and make some rocks How's that looking? Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Now, but we need that colour, believe it or not. We need this colour now. Where are we? Pulling down in the water. Nice and long. Boom. Boom. There we go. That'll do it. Now, I'm just grabbing the wider end of that colour with a bit more white just to put some subtle highlights here and there. Some in front of there, some in front of there. Just little bits here and there. Hit some of them. Make sure you get that in the reflection. Oh, get straight, you dog. I don't want to overdo it, I don't want it looking like a bloody zebra. I might put some kind of a post there. Who knows, just, I'll, I'll do something like that and um, probably do it off camera. I'll just kind of highlight that so you can see what we're doing. Because I want to do the water now and finish it. It's been taking a while. Boom. Now I want to dry it and we'll um, get the water shimmer on there. Okay, so the best way I like to put uh, a film of water, a surface film on top of the water, I get me glaze, get a flat brush, and you, I'm using craft white because craft white is a lot more flowy than structured titanium white, not too much. And that'll be translucent. And um, we'll start here, we'll just get like a nice surface against the edge there 
something here, sitting all that back. Boom. It's very, there's not much white in it because it'll, you put too much in, you'll turn it to snot. Um, we'll put some against here. Just like that against the edge there, like that. Put some simple, all the way across stuff. Sink stuff back, boom, like that. Uh, get some more on there. I want to sink, you mainly sink your, the corner of the brush, you sink your reflections. Oh, like that there. Sink, you go right across your reflections. Right across here, look at that, boom. This just looks better than, um, big knife marks on your painting. See, but see here, bang, it's going to come across the water and it's just going to look like, oh, get it nice and straight. It's going to look like a film of water on the surface. It's got a surface to it and it's sinking all the reflections down. Glaze and sink everything down. Okay, I'll just autograph it and then we'll whack a frame on it. So be sure to check out the links in my description below. All my paintings are for sale. Share, like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. I want to thank all my Patreons who support my content every month. Much appreciated. Uh, message me on Facebook if you ever want to buy my brushes or one of the tutorials. There's also prints available. Uh, there's a few ants, questions to answer in the group when you apply to become a member. And you can share your art there. Before I put my signature on there, it's already on there, I'm going back. I want to get some black lily shapes. So I want to try and make them like a flat disc. I'm using this brush. I'll just get some like that if I can. They're not quite working the way I want them. But you need the black under there. Okay. If anything, I want to shape like that, you know. Um, where are we? Probably put some floating in the um, reflections as well. Now I've dried it and I've got some of the forest green mixed with the cadmium yellow light. And just on the top, we want to put our lily that's a bit too transparent we want it a bit darker than that so you've got to leave some of that dark there just painting the top of them like a lily and you leave it that because that black is pretty much the shadow underneath it so get this right on top of it that noise you can hear, that's the rain outside. I opened the door and now I realise I can hear it in the recording, but that's all right. You could probably use a, um, so you get your brush like a flat. You just want the top of it highlighted with your, your lily colour. Get that top dark area gone and leave the dark line underneath it. So it'll give it shadow in the water Just pretty much pick up the yellow in here I don't know what these are but they look all right I'm just putting some Uh, stems in them <laughs> from there nice and skinny going up and then from there just a wiggly line down I don't want them on all of them I'm probably just going to pick the ones where I feel I want to do a nice reflection in the water there like that just something like that a couple of stems on them give them a bit of um bullshit additives to your painting. Okay, let's whack a frame on that. 
There we go. It's not too shabby. It's a covered bridge. It could have been better, but it is what it is. We've got a good sky there. We've got some distance within all there. We've got some reflections. And I know you can do that. Well, I hope you enjoyed this exercise. And like I said, check out the links in the description below. Tell your friends if you like what I'm doing. Uh, but if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody, all right? Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.